Coming up on the Globe Sports Corner, we take a look at a futsal tournament that happened over the weekend. Jim Daugherty comes down to the studio to talk about the final matches in the volleyball season, and Clinton Strobel talks about how the baseball team has been at this point in the season. All that is coming up on the Globe Sports Corner. Welcome back to another episode of the Globe Sports Corner. I'm Tanner Camp, and with the weather finally starting to get warmer, lots of people are going outside. But over the weekend, the women's soccer team hosted an event that required being inside at the rec center. This past Saturday, the Goshen College women's soccer team hosted its first annual futsal tournament in the Ruth Gundam Gymnasium. Futsal is like soccer, but played inside and at a much faster pace. Megan Bauer, junior midfielder for the Goshen College women's soccer team, had this to say about the idea of having a futsal tournament at GC. Uh, I mean, I was excited. Um, it's always nice in the spring to get play, and we always kind of miss it because the season in the fall seems to finish quite quickly. Um, so yeah, I was really excited. Futsal is always different to them playing outdoor. It's a lot quicker pace, um, it's just more skillful. It's just nice to get back out and play in um, with your teammates and playing against teams you know, from the community that we know a lot of the players, so it's nice to see them. Uh, again, them come out and play against them. The tournament featured eight different teams at all levels, from high school, college, and even graduated women. Women's soccer assistant coach Juliana Chupp is very passionate about the sport and has been playing for a long time. She talks more about why the program decided to have a futsal tournament. It's a fun game, it's a fast game, and it's an opportunity for for our girls to train, you know, to get more with the ball and also for the community girls, people that live around to come and play. And we were really happy with the amount of teams that we got for being the first time. In both the eyes of Bauer and Chup, the overall event was successful. Bauer enjoyed getting back to playing and seeing everyone. And Chup gives all the thanks to women's head soccer coach, Justin Crew, for making the event come to life. I, mean, I think it went really well. I had a lot of fun, um, especially say like it was our first one. We were kind of unsure at first how many teams we'd get, uh, how well it would go. Uh, but I think overall, um, everyone really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I, like I said, I had fun. It was great to be out here playing and great to see everybody. Today's event went pretty well. Um, I got to put that a little bit on Justin, you know, being responsible for that because he has a lot of qualities on how to get the community together. He likes being around people. He likes having fun. He has so much love for this sport. Be expecting the futsal tournament next year to include more teams, but still have the same amount of fun that was brought out this year. Reporting for Globe Sports, my name is Tanner Camp. It was fun to watch multiple teams compete over the weekend in a sport that is not heard much about. When we come back, Zach Begley will be with Jim Daugherty to talk about the latest on the men's volleyball team. That's coming up on the Globe Sports Corner. the best college radio station in the nation. It's not New York City or Chicago, it's Goshen College. Our broadcasting program is just one of Goshen's 35 outstanding majors. At Goshen College, you will work one-on-one -on -one with top professionals and get studio time in your first semester. You can call a game from the playing field or broadcast from a downtown radio studio. How do I know Goshen was the best choice? Right after graduation, I'll start my new job as a radio morning show co-host. Take the next step in your broadcasting career. I'm Zach Begley, back with you here on the Globe Sports Corner. With me is Jim Daugherty, head coach of the men's volleyball team. Coach, thank you for joining us today down here in the studio. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So you're nearing the end of your first season in men's volleyball here, as it's the first season ever for Goshen College Athletics. What were some of the goals you had coming into the season and some of the thoughts about building a program from the ground up? Uh, well, first of all, from the building the program from ground up, we want to get good student athletes, good recruits here that could do well at Goshen College. We also wanted to build a program that could, that could win some and be competitive, and we, and we have been competitive. Uh, as far as the season goes this year, it's been, uh, we've lost so many games by just a couple points. So that means we were competitive with a lot. Uh, our conference is really tough, as, as is uh, the, on the women's side. We have uh, Lords, it's number two in the country, Aquinas, number six in the country. So that's, that's kind of tough, but uh, uh, we've, we were able to compete with most of them for most of the season. Uh, the thing that hurt us more was injuries. So, yeah. So back to what I was saying, you had some goals coming into the year. What were some of the um, goals you had for 
this season? We wanted to be 500 um, and, uh, and close to that. Uh, losing Elias Bear early on mm -hmm. hurt us. Um, but uh, uh, for the most part, we were there. I, if you go back and look, we have, I think, uh, seven matches that, we, that you, we lose by uh, six points. So if you go back and put Elias back in and the points he could contribute, you win some of those. So if you put that to us, now we're 500. So we are hoping for that to happen. But. So as the season has progressed, I mean, assuming some of your goals have changed, what um, sort of how have those goals changed as the season has gone on? Well, uh, it's just that we wanted to stay healthy. We want to get into the tournament, which is uh, we're going to be in the tournament. Um, we're finishing up this week with a couple matches that were basically makeups because of the of weather. Um, so we're playing a couple matches here to make that up. But once we get to that, we get into the tournament, we'll see what we can do there. Um, I don't know who we're going to draw yet. We'll find out this week. So what are you hoping to accomplish in the tournament as it's the last few games of the rest of regular season here, like you talked about? I want to I be competitive, whoever we play. Uh, we probably have a good chance of playing Aquinas, um, and we just need to be very competitive with them. Uh, it'd be nice if we could push them to five sets. Um, we'll have to see. Um, but uh, right now, uh, we've got several players that are still out with injury. Um, we'll have to go through and see what we can do to get ready for Aquinas. We'll play them Friday, the last home match at home. So we'll see how we can do before we put them into the tournament. Coach, thank you for joining us here on the Globe Sports Corner. Thank you. Yeah, good luck with the rest of your season. Thank you. When we come back, I'll be with Clinton Strobel to talk about the baseball team. Goshen College students enjoy an amazing success record, and we have some impressive numbers to prove it. But stories of our graduates say even more, like developing a breakthrough antiviral drug for HIV AIDS, writing number one hits, being named one of Time Magazine's most influential people in the world for cancer research, and enjoying a broadcast career right out of college. They all started with a real world education on a campus that makes everyone feel at home. See how the numbers add up and schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Zach Begley back here on the Globe Sports Corner. I'm with Clinton Strobel, senior catcher for the Goshen College baseball team. Clinton, thank you for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So it's your senior season here as, and, your, of course, your final season playing baseball here at Goshen College. Sort of what was your mindset going in? What were some goals you were hoping to accomplish in your final year? Mindset going in was mainly just to have fun. Um, I feel like over the course of my college career, looking back on it, I felt like it kind of flew by. Um, Coach Childers talks a lot about living in the moment, being where your feet are. Um, and so this season, I really wanted to do that. I really wanted to focus on my teammates. I wanted to focus on myself, improve my game, obviously, but mainly just be there in the moment, be in my shoes, be where my feet are. Um, I think the game, as it relates to talent-wise and success, is going to take care of itself if I'm prepared. Um, so the reality is this season, I really just wanted to um, see the guys for who they are, see the guys for uh, individuals, not just athletes um, or teammates, but as my family, as a, as a brotherhood, um, and as a group of guys that I can feed into um, going into my senior season. So you're top 10 in the Crossroads League in batting average right now. What or What's your approach when you go to the plate? What are some thoughts running through your mind every time you step up in the batter's box? Um, that's a good question. I didn't know my I was top 10, so that's kind of a surprise to me. So that's part of my approach, actually. Um, Staying silent, staying grounded in myself, not really thinking about other people and where I stack up, but playing the best game I can. As it relates to at-bats, I really want to stick to uh, my plan. Um, I find a lot of times that everybody's got a plan, especially in baseball. Um, as it relates to me going in, it's my fourth season, so there's a scout report. Everybody knows what it is that I'm doing or my tendencies or what have you. I find myself sometimes uh, feeding into what the pitcher is trying to do to me. Sometimes they're giving me curveballs in the dirt, and I find myself buying into that, opening the zone a little bit. Mm -hmm. I have a plan. Um, I know what it is that I'm trying to do when I get up to bat. I know the pitches that I want to swing at. I know what the, resu the results that I'm looking mm -hmm. for. Um, and so essentially, going into at-bats, I focus on staying grounded in my plan, um, staying focused in the things that we work on weekly at practice, um, and not, not sort of being exposed in that regard, sort of staying within myself. Um, and once again, being where my feet are, not making moments too big. You know, you get up first inning of a game, real big game, playing a good team. We got a guy on second base, and I really want to make something happen. But being able to be where my feet are, not make that moment too big, um, 
and slow those moments down in big spots really um, has helped me sort of elevate my game, I think, um, as well as sort of taking the pressure off me once again because I know I have teammates and I got guys around me um, who are going to support me and help me out in the midst of different things that I'll go through as well. So there's a lot of things that went into my uh, that are going into my batting approach this year. Um, mainly, though, it's just a matter of sticking to my guns, my plan, um, and making sure that I make it happen. So you're halfway through the year, and so what are sort of some of the things that you've seen from the team that have gone well, and maybe some things that you could see improved as the season goes on? Definitely. Things going well. I think we've got some really, really athletic guys on our team this year. We've got some good arms. We've got some speed. We've got some good bats in our lineup this year. We've really got some good pitching. We've got a lot of guys that can make it happen just based on talent alone. Um, we've seen that time and time again in our season. We've played really good competition and played really well against them. Um, we've come up really big in really big spots. Um, so I think that the athleticism is a big part of that. I also think something really great that's been a, a joy to be a part of this season is the fact that we just got a group of guys that just want to be on the yard, on the field, all day, every day. We dream, sleep, we sleep, eat, and think about the yard all day, every day. Um, and that's something that I think really kind of elevates our game, elevates our program. We show up to the yard ready to go every day. And although, you know, as it relates to the results and the win-loss column, it may not look like it. I know being a part of the program that every time I show up with these guys, I'm energized, I'm rejuvenated, and I'm ready to go. Um, so that's something that I think uh, really does work for us, um, something that I've really enjoyed being a part of in this season. You did ask me what doesn't work, right? Yeah, yeah. Just the Some things that I think uh, we're working on, we're going to get better at, and we're making improvements on, I really do think... Uh, our timely plays as it relates to yeah. offense and mm -hmm. defense. We could be better. Um, we've lost a lot of close games this uh, this season. I think it's just based off of timely hitting and timely defense. Yeah. Um, at one level or another, we end up getting ahead of games early and sort of yeah. let teams crawl back or vice versa. We sort of come back late, but we don't really have that extra push to send us over the top. Right. I think as it relates to the timeliness of the games mm -hmm. and not making moments bigger than they are, I think those go hand in hand. Being able to be where your feet are and live in that moment and be in that space, not making it too big or too little, but just the moment that it is, I think can really help us with being more timely um, as it relates to making big plays and big spots, as it relates to making big big swings in big spots, and also as it relates to coming back um, and keeping teams down when we do have the leads. I think it all relates to timeliness that um, at one level or another we've lacked this year. Thank you so much, Clinton, for being with us here today. Good luck with the rest of your season. When we come back, Tanner will look ahead at the Maple Leaf schedule for this week. That's coming up on the Globe Sports Corner. I'm getting my degree from the college named TV School of the Year three out of the last four years. It's not in Muncie or in Indianapolis. I attend Goshen College, and communication is just one of the 35 outstanding majors offered here. At GC, you will work with professionals and get your hands on the camera in your first semester on campus. How do I know that Goshen College was the best choice? Right after graduation, I start my first job, broadcasting professional baseball. Take the next step towards your career. Welcome back to the Globe Sports Corner. Let's have a look at your Maple Leafs this week in action. The baseball team will be at home today as they will be taking on Siena Heights University in a doubleheader with the first game to start at 2 p.m. The softball team is also at home today. They will be against conference rival Bethel College for a doubleheader and their first game will start at 3 p.m. Men's volleyball will also hit the road on Wednesday to take on Siena Heights University. That match is scheduled to start at 7 p.m. Baseball will be at home again on Friday, going up against the 20th ranked Taylor Trojans with a 3 p.m. start time. The softball team will also be home at the John Engold Athletic Complex, up against the Marion University Knights, ranked 5th in the country. The doubleheader will start at 3 p.m. Thank you for watching the Globe Sports Corner. Be sure to check out our website at globeradio.org and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on the Globe Sports Corner.